The following is general advice only and should not be construed as accounting, legal, or any other professional advice. The details of your situation are fact-dependent, and you are advised to seek the help of a competent professional. Yeah, baby, we're back. Welcome back to another action-packed edition of CPA Reviewed, the official podcast of Miller71.com. As always, I am your humble host, Jeff Elliott, a licensed CPA in the state of Kansas, much to the chagrin of a few. Happy Friday to you. Today is Friday, September 20th, 2013. All right. Hey, two podcasts in one week. What's the world coming to? I go two months without doing one, and I do two in one week. Just keeping you on your toes. Okay, CPA exam pass rates came out for Q3 2013, and for those who don't keep track of such things, and I don't know why you would, um, Q3 is normally no, normally has the highest pass rates of the year. That's because in Q1 you have tax season, Q2 the people um, people are, are recovering from from tax season. And uh, Q3, you have, okay, usually, you know, at summertime, not a lot is on people's plates work-wise, uh, usually. And also, you have your recent college graduates who are fresh out of college, ready to take on the world and study before they have their big four accounting gig start in the fall. So normally Q3 passing rates are the highest of the year. Uh, this last time, a couple of things stick out. Number one, BEC's pass rate is pushing six. It's almost sixty percent. It's fifty-eight and a half percent. That's the highest I've ever seen. Um, why is that? Well, this is my opinion. There's more information out there. So a couple of years ago, sites like Another Seventy One did not exist, and um, now, there's more information. It used to be that you had to buy like your $2,000 or $3,000 study course and that's all you had. Now, there's alternative programs like the, like the Ninja Notes, which are not a full, full CPA review course yet. But um, people buy their uber expensive course, supplement it. There's more material. There's... It used to be you just had one look at the material, and that's all you had. Now you have now people can afford to buy their man pajama course, and then affordable supplements like the Ninja Notes, Ninja Audio. They buy that. They it's just a different look at the material. People are more informed now. Um, is the exam getting easier? No, I don't. There's 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 no reason to believe that the AICPA is passing more more people now. That's just an old wives' tale. So that's that. All right, on today's show, we have six callers. As always, you can call into the Ninja Hotline. If you want to know when the Ninja Hotline is fired up, I usually give about 15, 15 minutes notice. The number one thing you can do is go to my Facebook, go to the another71.com Facebook page. That's the easiest. Facebook.com slash another71. We're approaching 26,000 people on there. I always post on there or the forum as always. Um, I think I said as always twice in like two paragraphs. That's, that's a party foul. Um, so you have the forum and and then also the email list. If you want to get some some rock and free stuff, go to another71.com. Click on the study planner and you'll get free stuff. And you'll also, you'll also be informed when it's all going down. And so let's get to today's scholars. Hi, how are you, Jeff? Great. Who am I speaking with? Um, I'm good. Um, my name is Cecile. I just I um got one of your products, um, the flashcards for FAR. Okay. And um, I already took FAR in August 30, and I got a 70. I used Roger CPA um review, and it's was my first time I was out of school out of the accounting world for like 
15 years already I haven't been working in accounting, but I used to be um, a CPA in the Philippines, and then I just decided to go back to the accounting world. So I um, studied for four weeks straight, and I didn't make it. So, um, well, what other products I'd did you? Like, uh, sorry, excuse me. What, what other products did you use besides the the far flashcards? Oh, um, the products I used, I used, I enrolled in Roger um, CPA review. Um, I have his video. I have the Wiley um, book, which I answered everything like from you know cover to cover and I did it and um, I also have his notes um, a big thick book but you know four weeks of uh, studying straight uh, was very tough and it's difficult also to like study just straight straight for the whole day because it gets very um, exa exhausting and right. so yeah that's what happened and during the test I also had a problem with the computer it uh, broke down two times as soon as I started the simulation problem, and then it was it wasn't fixed, so I had to move to another computer. So it was it really stressed me out. But then the good thing is they investigated the results, and then they gave me a free retake. So NASA gave me a free retake. I don't have to pay, and they they were the ones who contacted California Board to process my um, my new notice to schedule. So I'm just waiting for that. But definitely I am uh, looking forward to make it uh, for this second time around. So now I am very confused as to like how I'm going to do this to make sure that I will pass the second time. Um, I really need your, your advice. Okay. Normally they, they don't give free retakes if you've already seen your score. I'm sorry. Well, well, usually, <coughs> excuse me. Usually, if you have a, if you have like some sort of computer issue, they will invest, mm -hmm. they will investigate it, look at the log, and then they'll say, okay, mm -hmm. uh, yes, there is an issue. Um, you can either have a free exam, or you can live with your score. But you're saying that they that they gave you your free exam after you had your results. Yes, they after I had my results. Um, I, and before I could apply because um, I had to wait for 40, uh, 48 hours, right? And then before I could apply for um, for a retake, I got an email from them, from NASBA, that they investigated my results and then they contacted um, California Board to give me a free retake. And then when I contacted California Board, it was true. Um, they said they processed it and then... I just have to wait for the notice to schedule, which is I'm waiting uh, for it to arrive today. They said that they're going to send me um, the payment form, and I I just have to ignore it. I don't have to pay cool. anything because they send me the notice to schedule, which I am very glad that I don't have to pay. I didn't expect sure. it, but that's what they said. <laughs> okay. Um, well, that's good news. Um, <clears throat> when you were going through your, your Roger course, did you take notes while you were watching the videos? Yes, I had a lot of notes and even had, a, you know, like a full notebook for that, like for every every subject. And I really tried to, even if I only had four weeks straight, I stopped working and had four weeks straight of studying. And I really made it like for each module, I was able to answer like all the multiple choice questions, but I only did it like... For some modules that were really very difficult for me, I did it like two times, but for some that were familiar, I only did it once because I didn't have enough time. Uh, but I really made it through all the MCQs, but, um, but um, the simulation problems, I didn't finish all. I just, you know, like some of them I haven't touched and because I, I had no time anymore. And then, so now, it feels like I, I am confused on where to start. My results show that of all the areas, you know, the MCQ areas, all five areas, four of them, uh, it showed that I was stronger than other candidates, and only one 
area where I was comparable. And then, um, and it is the area that, you know, it's the special, um, um, you know, those area where there is the business combination, <laughs> all those right. difficult areas. Right. Yeah, that's where I was weak. So, so, so you were stronger. You were stronger in most areas, comparable in yeah. one, and then weaker in one. Yes, I was only comparable in the specific transactions area. What about the simulations? The How did you do in the simulations comparatively? Simulation problems, it showed that I was weaker in simulation problems. So um, I, I, I just, you know, ran out of time. The seventh, I mean, the seventh simulation problem, I wasn't able to finish it. And also, I wasn't sure of some of my answers in there, but right. Um, yeah, well, let, let me ask you this: after you, after you took your extensive notes, how often did you review them? That was my problem because I didn't have time to review them all. Like, okay, as to what other people say, review them weekly. I didn't have time for that because I had to move forward trying to trying to cover all the topics. Uh, yeah, I mean, if you can't review, it's almost best to postpone your exam if at all possible because uh, the notes that you took in week one won't mean it won't mean anything to you in week four if you don't review them. And uh, mm -hmm. so, what's your timeline this for this exam for your retake? I am waiting for the notice to schedule to come, um, which is today, and I have to see if I can. Do it uh, by the end of October. That would be my the, the latest that I should take it because I've already scheduled audit um, for October 15, and I'm not sure. I, I I'm thinking of rescheduling the audit exam and just focus on SAR. Well, um, I mean, you don't necessarily have to have to reschedule the audit exam because. For FAR, you're going to need to go back from the beginning and go through everything as if you had never seen the, the material before. Because, because when people cut mm -hmm. when people cut corners and and don't do what they did the first time, sometimes they end up with a worse score than the first one, and they mm -hmm. wonder why. And um, because right now you're not five quote points away, you're you know you're seventy five yeah. you're seventy five points away. And so, how far are you along with your auditing prep? I'm just starting actually with audit. I just got the materials. Okay. Well, you have a choice to make. Um, you know, you can you can stay on track and take your exam mid October because it, it doesn't sound like you're working. Is that correct? No, I'm not working. I really okay. stopped working. Okay. So, for this one. so you can study full time, uh, which is fine. So you know, four weeks is great if you if you can study full time. So, um, you have a choice to make, but don't, but don't put off auditing because you feel like there's some momentum that you had with FAR. It's not really there anymore. You're going to have to go back all the way through again. But yes. um, since you're not working and you can study full time, make sure that you're not putting yourself under, under these uh, false deadlines that don't really exist. I mean, post, postpone it and, and do it right take more time to review because your problem is it sounds like you just didn't have enough time to review yes so that's what I would do um, you know you, you can flip a coin if it were me I would just move forward with auditing knock it out of the way and then go back to FAR take it take it like the second or third oh. second, second or third week in November <laughs> before Thanksgiving okay okay so, that would be yeah. I think that would be a good idea. So anyway, um, thank you so much, Jeff. I'm just uh, starting to use your flashcards, and also um, I'm looking into your other projects um, as well. So uh, thank you for your advice. Okay, yeah, and thank you for calling in. Hey, do you have the ten point combo? No, what I. I 
what's in your 10 point combo um i don't have well, it. well well the the light version is the flashcards which you already have the audio and the notes but hey shoot me an email and I'll, I'll just send it to you okay since you were the first caller today does that sound all right okay okay thank you very much jeff okay see ya okay bye. have a nice day you bye. Too, bye. Area code 214, how are you? This is Holly, are you there? Yeah, well, I, I figured I figured that was you, Holly, but I didn't... <laughs> Hi! How are you? <laughs> I'm good, how are you? Good, sorry that we couldn't talk the other day. Oh, I know, no, it's okay. It's always good listening, too, so... Um, my question is, I just passed BEC, and I've been on the CPA journey for six years off and on, and I had passed two parts and lost them, and um, I just took BEC again and just passed it, and now I'm going to take FAR, which I've only taken once, and I never studied, and I just took it on a whim to see how I did, and got like a 60. Okay. But um, my question is, I'm totally overwhelmed by FAR and the material in it, and I don't even know where to begin. I'm such a planner and a scheduler, and I like to have things that's like set out for me. And I don't know where to start with FAR, and I'm just completely overwhelmed. Well, that's that's normal. I mean, everyone is overwhelmed by FAR. Um, uh, walk me through the process that you did for studying for BEC. I use CPA Excel, and I. Um, I did the videos, lectures, and then I did um, multiple choice questions with that, and then I step, you know, used your information from the Ninja material and put that in by section with what I was studying. And so um, I study, you know, like the five main topics for BEC. I study by topic, and I put it all together, and I read all that, and then I go to the next one. Um, and the problem is, is that really – my only study time is on Saturdays and Sunday because I work full time. I have three kids. I just I don't have time to really get a lot of studying in during the week. So I normally study in like eight hour chunks of time. Right. So I just far and the good thing is is I work in governmental and nonprofit auditing. So I've got governmental and nonprofit down. Sure. Um, I just don't know the other stuff afar with the investments and the. Hedges and derivatives and all that, it just it freaks me out. <laughs> well, the, the good news is that they don't expect you to be an expert on those topics. You just have to know enough about it to answer multiple choice questions. So, right. And you also have 20% of the exam down already. I mean, of course, you should review for auditing and not-for-profit still. But right. uh, most people don't have that foundation. Most people... I don't know if they if they require a governmental accounting class anymore. When I was in school, they did, um, or at least at my alma mater. But um, anyway, most people are, are weak in that area, whereas it's a strength for you, so that's cool. Um, how many weeks did you take for BEC to study? I studied five for BEC. Okay. So that was a pretty good chunk of time. And I just got my NTS for FAR, so I'm ready to schedule it. I'm just kind of postponing because I'm planning. I start a new job September 30th. That's the other thing. I'm starting a new job, and um, I don't want to take it too soon because I don't want to commit to that time like the first week of my new job. So I was thinking around Thanksgiving time of taking the exam. Okay, yeah, that's that sounds good. You took five weeks for BEC, so let's look at – Maybe seven weeks for far. Uh huh. And let's schedule your exam before Thanksgiving. Okay. Because no one's gonna. I mean, it it would be better for you to build up all of your momentum, take your exam before Thanksgiving, and then enjoy the holiday versus kind of halfway doing the Thanksgiving thing and halfway studying off in the corner in the closet and being antisocial. And, uh, and yeah, I've so, had that before. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, yeah, that sounds good. I mean, it sounds like you have a, a recipe for, for success there. Um, I would just, I would just do it again. So like with FAR, like just taking it by section and starting at the beginning and working the way through, I don't know. It just totally intimidates me. <laughs> well, I mean, it's a it's a large amount of, of material, but you know, they just they just released the pass rates and 
Yeah, I saw your email on that. Yeah. So let's see how many uh, far. Okay, fifty-one percent passed far in Q3. Okay. So uh-huh. <laughs> uh, people are passing. So That's great. so just <laughs> yeah, just study hard. You'll be okay. 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 That's giving courage to <laughs> <laughs> If you if you need any um, help or motivation along the way, just shoot me an email or or, or call back call back in. Um, but yeah, just just have faith in in what you're doing because it worked for for BEC and just just keep doing it. Okay, I have one other question for you. Okay. The reg exam. I've always heard that it's best if you have no tax experience to take reg during like the January, February time. Is that a true statement? Uh, no, I mean, because it's a higher curve or whatever you want to call it. Um, because the tax people are busy <laughs> is what I've always heard. Well, ultimately no one truly knows that. I mean that I've, I've actually never heard that rumor, but, uh, I do know that historically the, the pass rates are always lowest in the first quarter, and that's usually due to busy season. But um, uh, strategic-wise, I think you just need to take it whenever it makes sense for you, um, and and not not worry about that. But uh, honestly, I don't I don't buy into that. But some might. Okay. I would just I, I would I would just okay. I would just study hard. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, thank you so much. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you, Holly. Uh huh. Bye bye. Area code 601, how are you? Hello. Hey, who am I speaking My with? My name is um, Dana Coleman. Dana? Uh-huh. Okay, hi, Dana. Hey, how are you doing? I'm doing great on this Friday morning. Oh, can't complain about that. Well, my question is, I kind of screwed up when I was doing my MTS, and I purchased the MTS for BEC when I should have been purchasing the MTS for RIG. Okay. So at the time, I was like full steam ahead on RIG. I had finished watching all of my lectures or whatnot, and of course, life got in the way. So right now, I'm on hold, and I'm not studying anything. But the problem is the two MTSs expire on January 17th. So, and then I took um, audit, and I was just 100% sure that I passed, and I actually failed that exam, and I have another MTS for it that expires April 1st. Okay. So, I was trying to get your input on if I should start setting in for BC or REG first and kind of get like a time frame on when I should try to plan to take those exams. Yeah, so it's it's mid to late September right now. So let's take BEC, like I don't know, October twenty second or somewhere in there. Okay. And then take regulation. Uh, I've been telling people to to schedule their exam before Thanksgiving, but that might be too tight of a time frame. So you might have to do it for the end of November. But what I would do is I would oh. I'd pull out your calendar and map it out today and lock in that November time frame or that, that, that November spot right now because what's going to happen is, as you know, that's the last, uh, the window. The last the window of 2013. Okay. And so everyone and their mom is going to be scheduling their exams. And, oh, okay. but, but, and they, will, they will all procrastinate. And so there's – you're you're gonna have to be flying to Florida to take your exam to find an open <clears throat> an open spot somewhere. So um, so how does how does that sound? It sounds like a plan. I've actually taken um, BC twice before. Uh, the first time I got like a sixty eight on it. The second time my score dropped, but I know I. I call myself just powering through it, and I didn't go back and reset sure. everything. So I, I think that would be doable. I've never seen red before. I've never, um, like I said, other than watching the lectures, I've never taken 
to um, actually gamble for. But yeah. I think that would be doable. Because I was torn between taking um, BC at the end. Well, I think I had actually scheduled it for like November 7th. And then I had just put um, red on that January date. But I didn't know how it was going to work with the holidays being in there. Um, well, since you've never taken reg, my one piece of advice is don't focus so much on the tax that you forget about the law and the ethics because it is a, a, around 40% of your exam. But just, just, I mean, just study hard. And the topics that aren't so fun to delve into, like AMT, like kind of exchanges, et cetera, if, if you spend the time, it will pay off on exam day if you kind of punt and are like, nah, I don't really like that so much. It, at least for me, it came back to haunt me. Um, so it wasn't until I f- forced myself to learn the hard topics that I, that I did well on reg. Um, but, um, so yeah, I, I take BEC, um, late October and regulation late November. And, uh, let's assume that you'll pass both, but if, if you come up short on one of them, then you still have, uh, early January to take, to take those exams, um, uh, before your NTS fail or drop. Well, huh, I'm sorry. Let me back up. You were saying, <laughs> you were saying that, that your NTS expires in January, not that you're losing a section in January. Right. Okay. I haven't passed All right. <laughs> Scratch that last part. Okay. Right. Yep. <laughs> okay. And then what about audit? Should I wait? I know it, my NTS grade expires April 1st. Yeah. Just, so I've been struggling with audit. I've taken it like three times now and my score just, goes up and down each time so you know i i was about to say move audit off into 2014 but the only consideration here or there is one consideration is that in 2014 they're going to completely test on the clarity standards see right now they kind of they kind of well they test both yeah when i took it yeah i had taken it back in i want to say a couple of months ago, the last testing window that was open, and it was actually one of my higher scores. I think I got like a 71 on it, but it was one of the higher scores, but I didn't see a lot of the new stuff tested. Then I failed, and I was like, well, maybe I, maybe more new stuff was tested than I realized. But Yeah. Um, so there, there might be some benefit to taking it. Instead of taking regulation at the end of the year, maybe taking auditing. Oh. Just because whenever, I mean, whenever they they redo the material or the format, usually there's a the, the pass rates drop a bit. Not that I mean, of course, people you know people, still fifty percent of the people still pass, give or take. But um, all else being equal, an exam that is getting ready to change, you want to get that out of the way first. But if you don't, it's still not a huge deal. Okay, so BEC mid-October, audit before the end of the year, and then just do reg in January. Yep, that sounds like a winner. Okay, thank you so much, Jeff. Okay, thank you, Dana. Nice talking with you. You too. Thanks. Hi, Marie. Being connected to a meeting. Oh, <laughs> are you there? Hello. Yeah. Hello. Are you there? Yes. Yes, I'm here. Are you? Um. Uh, are you? Are you connected to the computer? I was connected to the computer. <laughs> okay. Were you? Were you wanting to talk or, or or just listen? No, no, no. I wanted to talk about the audit exam. Okay. I've taken it five times. I keep getting 67s and 72s. And I don't know what to do anymore. Okay, so you scored 67 and 72? Yeah. Okay, well, you're you're getting better. Right? I, well, yeah. But I feel that 
I use Becker and I use the Ninja Notes. Okay. And audit is just the subject that I love. And I don't know why I keep getting 67 and 72. Because if, if I look at the Becker exams, I'm scoring in the high 80s, you know, and 90s. Okay. So I'm just frustrated at this point. Sure. How many times have you taken it? Five. Okay. Okay. When you're watching your your lectures, are you taking notes? Yes. Okay. When you have your set of notes, are you then reviewing them or rewriting them, or or do you just kind of take notes once and then they then you don't really come back to them? Yeah, I don't really come back to them. Okay. Well, that's probably the problem. Uh, Can you suggest that I keep rewriting the notes until... Well, well you don't have to keep rewriting them, but um, so let's say you're, you're two weeks out from your exam. If you're, if you're not reviewing your notes or the whole purpose of, of, of rewriting your notes is it just forces you to reabsorb the material versus you just kind of passively scanning down the page. It forces you to... Because you have these longhand scribbles on your legal pad, it forces you to kind of rewrite them into little fact nuggets, as I call them, and to really think about the material. So you're, you're relearning it. But if you just take notes once and then, and then don't come back to it, then, then there really wasn't a point to taking the notes other than it just feels good to do it because you feel like you're yeah. doing something. Um, how, how about your, your multiple choice questions? Are like let's say that your exam software has a thousand multiple choice questions. How many would you say that you're doing? Maybe five hundred. So about half of them. Yeah. I would I would do more. So I would I would review your notes more, um, and then and then when you're working the multiple choice questions, let's say there's an option there's an answer that you either don't know or that you knew, but you kind of think that you'll forget later on, are you writing it down or are you just kind of moving on? No, I write down all of the questions that I get wrong. Okay. And then I review them. Okay. Well, that's good. Um, At this point, I feel like I've passed regulation. I'm going to take far next. Because I'm fed up with audit. Okay. I've been taking it consistently every time I fail. And it's been five times. And I just feel like they're not going to give it to me until I pass another section that is not audit. Well, I mean, yeah, it's, it sounds like that, that you could use a break. And there's certainly some value in that. I mean, just from a motivational standpoint because no one wants to you know get up early and study at lunch for an exam that they're sick of seeing the material for so far we'll we'll present a nice break for you um <laughs> although that sounds kind of weird because far is terrible but um well your notes the ninja notes have helped me a lot because the material is freaking boring <laughs> well they well that's good um Okay, you passed regulation. Did you do anything different study-wise for regulation that you're not doing for auditing? Hmm. Okay, so I took reg three times. The third time I passed it. And the way I study is I took 10 days off. I listened to the lecture. I did exams for each chapter. And then I read the ninja notes and I passed it with 81. Okay. So, I mean, obviously, I can't take the same approach to every exam. Right. Because I tried without it. 
and it just seems like my mind is not there sometimes. You mean you're not paying attention or you're not focused? I'm not focused because I get frustrated. Right. Okay. About the fact that I've been doing this for three years. Right. Well, I think, like I said, I think FAR will, will, will be a nice, clean break for you. And maybe you don't come back to audit until 2014. You know, you have a new textbook, new question bank and all that. Just something new to look at. I would, I'd, I would even throw away your old auditing book um, because that, that kind of represents, you know, your frustrations uh, from the past and you can start clean. Um, when are you going to take far? In two weeks. In two weeks. Okay. Mm -hmm. How far along are you in your study? Um, I'm almost done with the chapters. So I just need to review. Okay. Have you, have you been taking notes? I've been rewriting the ninja notes. Okay. I, I, I've done it twice. Okay. And how do you feel? And when I look at the ninja notes, I feel fine. But when I look at the textbook, it's like, I want to die. Um, how far along are you in your multiple choice questions? So, um, let's say for auditing, you did half of them. How many have you done for financial? Half of them. The problem is that I get 50% right. Okay. All right. What you need to do, because you're, you're two weeks out now, is, is, is rescheduling an option and moving your exam out? Mm, no, because I don't want to lose reg. Okay. When does reg expire? Uh, November. Okay. So, I'm not working, by the way. So, so you, that helps me a little bit. Okay, well, that is good. So you have you have audit and FAR to pass before November? Yes. What about BEC? Did you pass that too? I'm waiting for the score. Okay. All right, so, so what I said about waiting until 2014 for, for audit, scratch that. <laughs> Well, I'm in California, so I really don't want to go get my master's. Well, yeah, but um, <clears throat> sure, but but also, um, <clears throat> I didn't I didn't realize that that you had a score dropping off. So so you can't wait. So essentially, you have to take audit in November, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. What what study software are you using? Becker. Okay. And the Ninja Notes, and um, I also have the lectures. The you know the Ninja. Oh, the Blitz videos. That. <clears throat> okay. Uh, for the next two weeks, keep keep reviewing the ninja notes and and you took you took notes from your video lectures correct yes okay uh read those two as many times as you can and <clears throat> so like let's say for a topic let's say governmental accounting i mean this is not a best practice because you're kind of under the gun here but for, for governmental accounting um fire up or start a set of 20 questions like Always do topic specific questions. Don't just do like a, a random set. So do do twenty governmental accounting questions in study mode where they give you the instant feedback. And just read the question and click around on the answers and and um it kind of build build that knowledge base. So do that do that for maybe one set of twenty, maybe for another set of twenty, and then start doing the questions for real. And um and, and this is only because you're so close to your exam. And so once you're scoring like 70-ish 
percent. Move on to your next weakest topic. Okay. And I mean, this is kind of a this is kind of a uh, my, my hair is on fire strategy. I mean, this is not the best practice at all. But since you're on such a short time frame, do that. And and that's also because you're you're, you're scoring fifty percent when you're doing the questions for real. So let's back up and 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 do the questions in study mode. <clears throat> and if you if you find that you've seen the questions so many times. You, not to sell you more stuff, but you might you might get something like the Wiley Test Bank or whatever if you want to. Um, if not, that's fine too. But okay. but that's what I do. Keep keep reading your notes, the Ninja notes, and do those multiple choice questions in study mode. And for the next two weeks, well, since you're studying full time, I know that it's hard to stay disciplined when you're. You know, when when your job is to study, I mean, it's extremely um, easy to, you know, goof off or be on Facebook or wake up in the morning and you're like, nah, I'll study later, and then and then <clears throat> and then you never get to it. So, um, I would I would keep the mindset that your that your exam, <clears throat> excuse me, is like in three days, and just have that intensity, okay? Okay. Right. Okay. Thank you so much, Jeff. <laughs> well, I'm not sure if I helped, but I tried. Well, you gave me some hope. Okay. <clears throat> Just, the, the, Marie, the key for you is to stay focused and stay motivated. If you lose that focus and motivation, shoot me an email and I'll, I'll respond in all caps or something. Okay. Thank you so all much. Right. All right. Take care. All right. Bye. You too. All right. Going now to... Let's see. Hey, Lisa, are you there? I am. How are you? I'm doing okay, thanks. What are we up to? Well, I've been at this for a long time, and if you've already talked about this, forgive me because I just dialed in. That's right. But um, it's it's been a long, hard road. And I have to finish Reg and um, and BEC by the end of the year, and I am losing my motivation <laughs> and my drive. You have any suggestions for that? Okay, you have to pass Reg and BEC by the end of the year because you have an exam expiring. Yes, I've actually passed all of them, but I lost um, Reg and BEC. And that happened at the end of 2012. So in 2013, the beginning of tax season, I had a really hard time studying. So right after tax season end, I started studying for reg. And I thought, you know, I've passed this before. I can do it again. And I went and sat for the exam and didn't even finish. So I was very bummed out. And then getting back into the book, it's just been, um, it's been real hard. All right. When is your next exam scheduled? October 3rd. And which one is that? For reg. Okay. So your 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 main concern is staying motivated. Yeah, to um <laughs> I try to make I try to make sure that I do uh, a certain amount every day, but I do work. And um, sometimes I'm just staring at the book saying, yeah. you know, <laughs> think in, please. <laughs> well, it is, it is hard to repass a section because I, I lost my financial credit. And so uh, because when I passed financial, I, I treated it like I had passed a CPA exam and, and took a whole year off. Mm. Which doesn't bode well for your eighteen month clock, but so so how so how do you stay motivated to pass a section that you've already passed? Is is essentially what you're staring at, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, well, do you want this misery to be over with? Yeah. Do you want it done by Christmas or or even Thanksgiving? 
Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, you've got to. You have to uh, remember why you're doing this in the first place. So, is it is it career? Is it just something that you want to do? Is it are you trying to prove something, or is it something as simple as I hate the AIC, the AICP and I'm not going to let them beat me? Type of deal. Um. So. You have, to, you have to remember why you get up early in the morning, why you're staring at a book about tax law when you'd rather be doing anything else. Um, and then also you have to find, you have, you have to feel some heat. So your, your exam is October 3rd, so that's in like 13 days or so. Two weeks. Yeah, two weeks. Yeah. And so you probably not, I mean, yeah, it's off on the horizon, but you're not feeling the heat as if in, as if it was like in five days. Right. Or if you were, if it was a Saturday morning and you were looking at a Monday morning exam, you'd be feeling the heat. Right. And you'd be scrambling. So you need to find that mindset right now because if, if you start the Saturday morning before your Monday exam, it's too late. But the heat's certainly there, so you're certainly working hard. But it's too late. Well, it doesn't have to be too late. People can pull out a Hail Mary. But um, So let's back up. Let's have that same intensity. And uh, yeah, like just have the mindset, I am going to do this one more time, and I'm going to, going to give it 110%. I've passed it before. I know how to pass the exam. And to use a sports cliche, an overused analogy, leave it all out there on the field. Like study as hard as you can, and then – once you leave that exam center, like regulation's gone. Mm-hmm. So do it once and do it right. Okay. How far along are you in your prep? You have two weeks. Your two weeks left. Right. Um, I am in my last chapter of reviewing. So I've done all the multiple choice questions. Um, going back again. Um, I followed along where I uh, started with, uh, you know, listening to all the lectures. I rewrote the ninja notes. Um, I, you know, I'm going back to each chapter and answering all of the questions again. Um, I get down on myself, and I'm probably my worst enemy, when I don't get a question right. And I try to say to myself, well, you know, this is an opportunity to learn, you know, but when I'm going back and doing the questions, if I'm not getting at least a 75, I am like, dadgummit, you know, is this ever going to work for me? Right. So you're, you're a bit of a perfectionist. (laughs) Yeah, I, I guess, I guess so. Yeah. I've, I call this MCQ OCD. Mm. People have obsessive compulsive about their about their multiple choice questions um, and it's bad it's bad when you're studying because it's a mental block and you don't get as much done as you should it's really bad for exam day because you're you're on question three of your first test lit and you can't get a formula to work out none of the answers or no, none of the answers are there and so you spend six minutes on a question when you should only be spending two minutes and it just it's a downward spiral from there. Um, so, wow, that's, that is right. That is me. <laughs> that's exactly what happened in reg. My first question, I could not figure out the answer and the rest of the test. I just felt defeated. You've got it. Like, and it makes you have to push. Like I, the reason why I know that that happens is, is because that was me too. <laughs> you just have okay. to say, you just have to say, forget it. Um, pick B or C, move on. And, okay. and don't dare go back to it. Just move on. Okay. And I mean, it might be a pretest question, Tw- like 15 to 20% of the questions are pretest. Just assume that's a pretest. Just mentally move on. Okay. And same thing in your, when you're working practice questions, if you're not getting something, well, I mean, if it's a formula, that's one thing, but if it's something conceptual that you're just 
that you're frustrated because you don't know the answer. Well, first of all, make sure that you're doing your questions in study mode because the only the only exam mode that you should be doing is when you're actually taking your exam. Um, that way you get your instant feedback. But just just jot it down on a piece of paper, like a, and then mm-hmm. and then after you've done after you've gone through all your multiple choice questions, you have this list of stuff that has stumped you, and then just keep reviewing that and. And then when you see it on exam day, it's not, it's probably not going to stump you. Okay. So. Yeah, I talked, to, I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead. I talked to a gentleman, a gentleman the other day that was on and he, it just, the light came on for me and it was, it was a good thing where I was, you know, I listened to all the lectures, I wrote the notes. And then when I was trying to do the multiple choice questions, I was trying not to look at any of that the stuff to help me and I was getting one wrong after another wrong and then when I talked to the gentleman about it he said well he said you know I usually review my notes before I do the multiple choice questions I'm like well it's here for me why aren't I doing that right so so that was a little bit of an eye opener and yeah maybe I could just take it at, you know and review some of this stuff at other times besides sitting down and just doing multiple choice questions <clears throat> Well, the, the the reason why you jump into multiple choice questions is because it's more fun just to be doing something versus just sitting there staring at something. So, it, your 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 brain likes to be engaged. Mm-hmm. Um, there's some sort of activity involved. So, you have you have two weeks left, thirteen days left. Um, you know, make sure that you're that discipline wise, so, like getting up early, studying at lunch, make sure that you're treating it like you're three to three or five days out, not 13 days out because, uh, the October 3rd will be here before you know it. Yeah. Okay. Is that helpful? I'm going to try to give it all I get, okay. uh, all I've got. <laughs> okay. Well, well, that sounds great. And shoot me an email, Lisa, if you need any help. Okay. I appreciate it. Thanks so much. All right. Bye. Bye. Hi, Jay. Are you there? Jay, are you there? Jay, are you there? Hello, Shang? Hello, Shang? All right, over two. Hello, Ender. Hello. Hey, hey, how are you? Hey, I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing great. Where Where are you calling from? I'm calling from New York. Cool. And uh, I'm calling because uh, can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you great. Okay, yes. I'm calling because uh, I just sat for BEC portion of the exam for the fifth time. And uh, I've been like, um, I'm kind of frustrated because it's the fifth time I took it. And I went from a 60 to a 74. And then I went down to a 68, done a 70, now a 71. I'm like on the ballpark with just like five five points away. And it's just like every time I take it, I'm just behind by like another four or five points. It's kind of, I don't know if I'm doing anything wrong, but I'm like doing all the questions, multiple choice questions and everything. So I'm just behind by a few points. I just need, and I have done all the uh, final review courses. I did the Ninja Notes, everything. So I'm just behind by those couple of points. I don't know what I'm doing wrong, if I'm missing anything. So uh, I was wondering if you can give me some advice on that. Well, <clears throat> excuse me. Usually when this happens, it's because mm-hmm. you went from a 60 to a 74. Oh, actually, 60 to a 68 to a 74, then a 70, then a 71. Okay. When you went from a 60, mm-hmm. when you went from a 60 to a 68, and then a 68 to a 74, um, mm-hmm. my guess is is that you put in a ton of work. Right. And then once you got up to that 74, you thought I'm mm-hmm. I'm almost there. And so on your next exam, mm-hmm. you went from a 74 to a 70. Yes. My my guess is that you did not do exactly what you had done before. You kind of backed off a little bit. Um, uh, uh, is that true? I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure because I had taken it on uh, the on uh, January the 28th, and, no, on February the 28th, 
No, yeah. And then I took it a month after in in April. So I had like gave myself more than a month, about six weeks to prepare for that exam. And then I got a 70. I was like bummed out. And then I, I just like, it was hard for me to push back up and start taking it over again and start studying. And I'm studying for it again right now as we speak. And I'm just redoing all the questions on Wiley. And um, I'm doing pretty good on the on the exams. I just got an 85 about an hour ago. I just took a practice back practice exam and take another one right now i just like thought i should call you and see sure. okay when you when you went from a 68 to 74 were you watching videos mm-hmm. do you have do you have video lectures i have the becker video lectures and i watched those watched those okay when you went from a 74 mm-hmm. to a 70 did you watch those again no i just did the multiple choice questions okay. like three times yeah. over and over and over yeah and 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 that's that's what I mean. People get close, and so they uh-huh. they stop watching their videos, and then they focus on multiple choice questions. Sometimes it pays off, right. but uh, um, I've always said do exactly what you did to get that seventy two uh-huh. or seventy three or seventy four, and then some. Uh-huh. People okay. people just stick. To, people just do the and then some. They don't they don't go back to 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 the, the core foundation, and so. Um, if I were you, I would, I would, I would start from scratch and like, mm-hmm. and watch watch your videos again. Um, uh, have you added any? I mean, people usually need to add more study time, or right. or more, or have more focused study time, or right. add supplementary materials like the Ninja Notes or something like that. Um, right. So do everything that you did to get that 74, you're watching your videos, you're taking notes, you're doing a thousand multiple choice questions, you're taking notes over those multiple choice questions. That's the one thing I didn't do. Um, I had the Ninja Notes, I reviewed them, like I read everything like twice, three times before sending for the exam, but then I was reading into it and then people wrote that they rewrote the notes five times, right? Somebody somebody just wrote that on, and uh, you had posted it on Facebook, and I was reading into it. Like, people, someone rewrote the notes, right? I think that would be what I, that's the only option that I could think of that I didn't do that I could think of doing. Well, you mean, you mean besides going back and watching your videos again and taking notes and rewriting yeah. those notes? Rewriting the notes from the Ninja notes that I purchased um, from uh, another 71 website. Right, well, I, I mean... When when people rewrite the ninja notes, that's fine. Uh-huh. But um, I also, I mean, you know, the ninja notes are there are there to re- to review. I also think it would be helpful if you rewrote your own notes. Okay. Uh, I could do that. Yeah, that's that sounds like a good idea. I I have all these sticky pads, and I just write any formula that I, that I'm kind of behind on. If I need to memorize, I just put that on my wall, and I just review them as I'm brushing my teeth every morning. So just reinforce those formulas. I think yeah, another strategy wouldn't hurt. I could rewrite all those notes all, all over again. Well, what I would do is I would I would start fresh. So start disc one of your BEC lectures. Get out of this get, one off. Okay. Get out. Get get out a fresh legal pad. Okay. And take notes. Okay. Great. I'll do that. And uh, because you're you're obviously smart enough to pass pass the exam, like you were one quote point away. Um, right. And so let's let's do it a hundred percent. Be very thorough this time. That way, you know, BEC will be a thing of the past. Great. All right. Great. That's great. That sounds great. Thank you so much, Jeff. All right. Thank you for calling in. All right, bye. Bye. Well, that does it for this edition of CPA Reviewed. Hope you enjoyed the show. And as always, you can go... <laughs> that's the third time I've said as always. That's going to be my go-to... Um, was that a, is that a crutch? You can go to another71.com, click in the upper right-hand corner, Ask Jeff. And I usually answer those or make them a part of... Or answer them directly or make them a part of the Ask the Ninjas. Or be on the lookout for the next Ninja Hotline. Be good, take care, and I will talk to you soon. I'm not impressed by your performance. See that? He's being funny.